So, patch 4.3 is coming out on May the 22nd. People who predicted that, you're spot on, especially the people I know on Reddit, etc. All of these translations, by the way, are thanks to Hez Kessel and Iluna Minori on the Final Fantasy XIV subreddit Discord. Please go over to that link in the description and support them for their wonderful work. In regards to the features for 4.3, there are a few delays, unfortunately. The Hildebrand adventures are getting delayed to till patch 4.35. Heaven on High is being being delayed till 4.35 as well. The Pagos expedition for the Forbidden Land of Eureka is also being delayed to 4.36, which I guess is halfway between that month and a half maybe, something like that. And also Ultima Weapon Ultimate, which has also been given the name the Weapons Refrain Ultimate now, till 4.31. I'm not sure what those numbers are about, but presumably not with the patch this May 22nd. So first of all, they look at the job adjustments. Apparently seven jobs are being touched this time. Those include Dark Knight, Monk, Ninja, Samurai, Black Mage, Scholar and Astrologian. Apparently most of the Dark Knight adjustments are going to be potency increases because a full rework will take over six months to do so they're looking maybe at the next expansion. All they can do is buff the sort of potency of Dark Knights but it's not really going to be enough maybe. Apparently they're going to shorten the animation for Plunge as well. Monks apparently are being adjusted to be in line with Samurai and Samurai is just getting a plain potency increase to their combos. Apparently five actions in total for Samurai will be buffed to bring them in line. Black Mages aren't getting any nerfs or buffs, they're just getting their teleportation actions buffed. The animation speed increase for Between the Lines and Ethereal Manipulation has been increased, but again nothing about potencies because they're I guess where they want them. Scholars will have more usability adjustments and Astrologians have their damage cast speed increased and also with the light speed MP reduction effect now doubled and Aspected Helios getting a buff. They'll have more information in the actual patch notes closer to the release date of the patch. Next they look briefly at the new Beast Tribe quests. These are of course the Namazu. They briefly show a new plushie that you can get from a crane game in Japan. These are obviously going to be costing me a fortune on eBay and I definitely want to get one. The Namazu themselves though will be setting up camp somewhere in the Azim Steppe which will have its own etherite which is a brand new etherite to the zone and will be featuring rich storyline with the Namazu apparently trying to make a eastern themed festival and you're the person that they asked to help. This allows you to level from 60 to 70 on both gathering and crafting subclasses. The ultimate reward is indeed a mount and this is a Namazu carriage which in its terrestrial form apparently the Namazu will carry you around like a god in the carriage with them either side of it and in the air they will hang on to dear life as it floats around which is pretty entertaining. I need this. Next up, they briefly look at the housing updates, which includes the message log where people can visit your house and leave messages. You can actually put a load of filters on this to make it so that it filters out bad people or it doesn't automatically publish people's messages. You actually have to review them first. There's also a like system as well and lots of restrictions to that, a little bit like Facebook, people can like your stuff. There's some new housing items, including a picnic blanket and a picnic set. These are actually contest winners, and that's one of the ones that's getting put in the game. Very cool. Additionally, there's also a stove set, which also has like a chopping board on one side and a sort of surface the other side. It goes together quite nicely and is one big thing, so it just dies together, which saves you having to faff around with different pieces of furniture to match. There's also a broom and a bucket, because somebody wanted a broom and a bucket for display reasons and also a little lantern which you can put on your desk which is to do with sort of like the various Zayla tribes and um, it's like a hut from the Azim Steppe which is pretty cool actually and also a sort of rice ball display thing presumably food that you might be able to eat for buffs but it's one of those tabletop items which features an Amazu and a Moogle, which is adorable. Another item that's being added into housing is actually obtainable in the Make It Rain Festival, which is coming soon in June, apparently. And this is a basketball game, which you might remember from the Gold Saucer. You can actually get the mini games now in your houses, and this is the first which is being added. So if you wanna start saving at MGP, or just wait for the event, this is gonna be one of the new rewards added in that June patch, presumably. Now they briefly look at the Weapons Refrain Ultimate, Ultimate Weapon Ultimate. They don't really talk too much about it, but they say that the new background music for this fight will be off of the new Primals album, which is sort of metal covers of the in-game themes, which are pretty awesome. And also they show off the fact that you'll be fighting 
uh, against various primals that are related to Ultima, including Garuda, Ifrit, and Titan. And on the actual trailer, if you watch it slow enough, you can actually see these in action. Yoshida goes and messes around with Garuda a bit, but there's not really anything shown on the fight, because obviously it's a spoiler and it's world progression. Next up, they briefly look at Heaven on High, which is of course being delayed, unfortunately, until about a month after this patch, I presume. And they're talking about how the deep dungeon will work. The inside of this is like a giant dojo that reaches into the sky. If you've ever played Final Fantasy VII, imagine the dojo in Wutai. That's pretty much what they're going for. Each of the rooms has a randomization factor, so everything should look different. It can actually render rooms that are just big and open, full of monsters, or empty to completely. It has 100 floors in total and after floor 30, 31 onwards will be high level dungeon. Won't have storyline but will have serious challenges, presumably a lot of mounts and minions and other things, probably hairstyles, with the same limitations as Palace of the Dead. Pomanders are back and haven't really changed too much, however there's no more manticore and transformation buffs, they have been changed to new updated stuff. Instead of being transmutated into different creatures, there's three new pomanders, the Pomander of Incapacity, which actually applies innovation to all enemies on the current floor, the Pomander of Concealment, which actually allows players to be rendered invisible on that floor to all enemies and traps, but if you press a button, any one of you, then it will actually cancel this effect, and the Pomander of Petrification, that any mob in sight range of you will be petrified, which is a one-hit kill, so it's best to save these for big open rooms full of mobs, such as horrible rooms with lots of mimics, for example. In addition to this further, there's new NPCs that will randomly appear. These NPCs will give buffs when you are nearby to them. Kamenu, which is the same model, all of these are the same model as minions you've already seen. Kamenu increases the damage dealt by nearby players to him. Inugami decreases the damage received by nearby players. And Senri restores the HP of nearby enemies over time, which is a nice little added feature. In addition to this, we talked previously about what the hell Grand Summoning was. Apparently it's Primal Summoning, and they show Ifrit summoning Hellfire here. You can actually collect Magicite in silver chests. They made it so that in Instead of just never opening another silver chest when you get 99.99 ether pool, you have a reason to open them and Magicite is inside. You can carry one of each and they cannot be stacked, but essentially once you get one you can use it like a Pomander. It's even on the Pomander screen just below with, uh, with the Magicite section and it can summon one of the three primals, Ifrit, Garuda or Titan. And obviously these do their ultimate attacks to mobs in that room which is pretty damn awesome. There's new floor effects, including the floor effect of sprint, where basically you get infinite sprint at all times on that floor, and also a Magicite prohibited buff, which obviously stops you from using summons on certain floors. There are going to be new weapons for the Aether Pool exchange. You can exchange gear within Heaven on High. You can exchange 10 points of strength for a unique token, and you need to save up your tokens a certain amount of time, which they haven't specified, for a weapon. There's also minions, mounts, and other items that can be exchanged for with pot sherds found in heaven on high as well as from pieces from the accursed horde apparently in 4.3 the palace of the dead will also be updated to use the same system as a new heaven on high system they show off where you queue up for it which is obviously in the ruby sea where the heaven on high sort of stacked building thing is they briefly show the sort of dojo rooms inside but apparently on the trailer if you slow it down you can see quite a few rooms demonstrated as well they also show the weapon buffs which have completely new models which is really cool. Next up, performance action updates. These basically make the keyboard easier to use. They've also added a few UI improvements and new sounds, including oboe, piccolo, clarinet, flute, and pan flutes. They're working on grand piano, steel guitar, and pizzicato, and apparently if you hold the key down, the note will keep playing and will fade after a while. So if you're into that, you'll probably be excited by that feature. For people who are colorblind or have visual impairments, you can now filter certain colors out using a new color spectrum system in the UI accessibility menu in your system settings, which allows you to change any color in the game for anything else, basically. As they demonstrate here, they change certain shades for purple and pink, which is pretty cool. They go over a new Feast Tournament Championship, uh, which is actually going to be taking place at the new Fan Festival events, which they have the dates for in a moment. I'll give you those. I'm not going to go into it too much detail, but if you want to prepare for that, you need to go and form a team and start working towards that if you're going to the Fan Fests. Next up, the other section of the live letter was mostly covered by the interview with Yasumi Matsuno. They fielded a lot of questions and answers from the official forums and people on Twitter to the creator of a 
Return to Iblis series and Final Fantasy XII story. This is actually going to be in another video. I want to cover that. And obviously, if it's going to be a trailer breakdown video as well, so I've got to get quite busy. But there's a lot to talk about here. They briefly show some of the bosses. There's a bit of spoilerificness, but they cut out most of it. But yeah, that's for that, basically. They cover how they developed Return to Iblis and implement it into the game. They show off some of the gear here. Apparently, these are the tank sets and the melee stuff. And finally, the FanFest dates and announcement for 2018-2019. The European FanFest will be taking place in the Le Grande Hall de la Villette in Paris, France on February the 2nd, 2019 and February the 3rd. In Japan, it's March the 23rd and 24th in Tokyo. And the American FanFest 2018 will be taking place on the 15th of November until the 17th in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. Apart from showing more stuff that they want to promote, such as the Primals album, it's pretty much just the end of the live stream at this point. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully this was to the point so you know exactly what's coming out when. I tried to do it so that it's not just complete waffle. Thank you for watching the video, however, and I'll see you all next time.